To be honest, I didn't have any expectations for this tour. It's my first tour of Germany and Switzerland. And uh, I knew that my song had been on the radio and I know that, you know, it's been number one and it's been an adventure for the for the past few months. But uh, I didn't know if people were going to show up, if people had gotten the album yet or anything like that. And then uh, we had so many full houses and so many venues that were originally smaller. Um, we were moved to bigger venues. So uh, like in Hamburg, I played for 1,500 people. My first concert in Hamburg and it's, people are clapping and singing along and um, screaming for more. So it's it's been a real adventure. Every night was pretty overwhelming, to tell the truth. It was, um, uh, it was very unexpected, and uh, it was a blast. And I think also the fact that we've played so many shows in such a short time, you know, six days a week, I've never toured like that in my life before. And um, getting to see the differences between the audiences in the different cities and eating um, currywurst and drinking rice beer. I really feel that I've been on a real German tour now. <laughs> I know that um, in some cities, like the, the bigger cities, there were a lot of people who were only there for, for that one song, If a Song Could Get Me You. But I wrote that one too, so that's okay. Um, but in, uh, in other cities, there was also um, a real um, commitment to the other songs on the album. I think uh, the audience was a little bit different every night, but I think the German audience in general are so they're so quiet when I'm playing and then between the songs they give me so much response I mean I get I get so much back from them and it, it really I think that is the energy that's kept me alive on this tour because <laughs> it's been so busy on this tour I've just never really s snapped out of it uh, we've had no days off uh, the days that we've had in between the one day a week we've used to travel the really long distances and so I just feel like I've constantly been on stage and doing interviews and meeting people and signing autographs and just um, really doing what I've done for a few years now already, but a lot more intensely. And um, it's been a fantastic trip for us. It's coming to an end, but uh, it's, been a, it's been a great trip. And I'm really happy to, to uh, be able to announce um, the new tour in February and March on stage when I'm playing a sold out show. It um, makes me feel pretty great. Well, um, not to sound like a rock and roller, but um, it comes to a point where you're very used to sleeping just five or six hours. And um, uh, I know that to get the energy that I need to do this, I, I need to try and run. Um, I don't do it every morning, but maybe four or five days a week. I need to run and I try, I try to eat something healthy every day and drink some water and um, just keep my, um, keep my body not sick because my, one of my instruments are in my body so I have to make sure that, that I can sing every night because if I can't then there won't be a show and a lot of people won't be able to go to work or have fun so it's a big responsibility but it's, um, it's one that I'm really um, happy to have. Well I only run inside because I'm so, uh, first of all I'm very very allergic to almost everything uh, except for music, um, and I, I'm so worried about getting a cold, so I, I just I take no chances. So I run inside, but in in a few of the hotels that we've been in, they've put the gym on the top floor, which is really nice because then I get, can go sightseeing and run at the same time. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it's been really magical uh, seeing the reaction to the songs that are not on the album that I released here. The album that I released here is a compilation already and it's based on the concert that we're doing so most of the songs that people are hearing they've heard before and I think that's a good thing as a listener so you know what you're going to but but um, we have a few songs in the set that are not on the album and for me to see the spontaneous reaction to those songs have been really magical um, when it's worked but it's it's worked most of the time and uh, also just um, Seeing the span in age, I mean, we have most of the shows are 18 and up, but um, I have people from 18 to 50, and some of them are, um, you know, I think all all of them are, are um, drawing different things from my music. I can tell that some of them are there because my melodies are so cheer cheerful, so they feel good when they hear it, and that's what they tell me. But then about 50% are also listening to the lyrics and really getting that duality that's going on there and uh, are standing there and um, 
getting a different experience. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Being happy is not very inspiring when you're a songwriter. I think uh, it's actually a songwriter's biggest enemy, being too comfortable. Um, I get mostly inspired by, uh, by thoughts that I have or um, hearing a, a story from a friend and not necessarily a great, uh, a great happy, cheerful one. Um, but then again, I love writing melodies that um, get stuck in my head. That's how I write them. I get an idea and then it just keeps going and going and going until I sit down and just finish the song with an instrument. Um, and I, I think it's a, it's a cool thing to be able to, to invite the listener in with um, a melody that gets stuck in your head and then maybe after ten times you start thinking about the lyrics and um, it brings a new dimension to the song. I think that makes for some, some interesting songwriting. Uh, I heard someone say that um, the perfect love song can't have been written yet since people keep trying, but I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about the fact that love is different to all people. It's different in all lives. It's, um, and it changes so much your whole life, different kind of love. The songs I wrote about love when I started writing songs at 13, uh, that kind of love is so different from what I'm doing now 13 years later. But I think life and love, it's, uh, it's an undying subject. It's, uh, we want to hear about it, we want to write about it. Um, and I, as long as I write about that, I don't think I'll ever empty, you know. My songs are mostly about me, but I also have a great imagination, so I add details that aren't really in the true stories. I pull some details out <laughs> if I want. Um, also, sometimes I find myself sitting there being a hobby psychologist for my friends, like we all are sometimes, and secretly taking notes behind my ear that I'll go home and finish a song and feel really bad. But um, I think it's an honor to end up in a song. It makes you immortal, doesn't it? I think it's so important for the listener to also be able to put their own lives into my songs and my lyrics. At least for me as a listener, when I listen to my favorite albums, um, I love it when I can go, wow, I wonder how I never saw, saw that situation from that perspective before, or how can she know exactly what I'm feeling or he. Um, and I think that's a, a really powerful thing about music as well, the recognition and, and the fact that somebody is actually speaking your mind, things that you haven't uh, been able to put into thoughts or words before. I wrote that song when I was just starting to realize that and I wanted to resist it a little bit. I was hoping that, you know, even though you don't end up spending your whole life with your first boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, you can start anew and you can be a fresh person with just, you know, no memories, start over, but it, it doesn't work like that. And I think the fact that um, most people fall in love with someone who's been in love before really takes away the illusion that we have of love. and. We keep striving for something that doesn't really exist because, at least, I'm 26 now. I might be completely not standing for this in two years or five, but I think that to be able to really love someone, you also have to have tried things before. And I'm not talking about... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that I think the choices you make when you know, that, when you know what you might be missing makes the love even better. You know, that's, that's more grown-up love, but still, I was writing that song when I was really paranoid about being compared to his ex-girlfriend, wondering if I was doing things right. Uh, was, I, was she prettier than me? Uh, did she say the right things? Did she behave the right way? Um, and that's, um, I guess it's a pretty powerful story because that is the song that I've gotten the most response to out of all, all the ones I've written. Well, as a writer, I like never revealing that. <laughs> For the reason that I was telling you before. But um, of course, all the stories I end up putting music to are stories that mean a lot to me. So even if I didn't at first experience the stories myself, um, I am putting myself in that situation to write the song. So I guess the answer is yes and no. <laughs> Well, uh, I live in a suitcase now. Uh, I've been doing it for about a year, and um, traveling and touring in Norway is a bit different because I get to go home one or two days a week and do my laundry and change my clothes and hang out with my friends. Um, so it's, it's definitely changed my life, 
but um, I'm getting to play for thousands of new people, new listeners. I'm getting to um, uh, affect their lives with my music. I know that they have my record at home. Um, and that's, that's really magical for me. And I think that uh, the fact that it's going well here now uh, permits me to do this for a few more years. And uh, as a songwriter and an artist, this is um, you're always worth as much as your last song. Um, that's just how it is. And I have to, you know, I will keep writing my whole life, no question about it. But the fact that I get to tour and get to um, have th this lifestyle with music and travel with my band and have a fantastic time, it's just um, everything has to do with the fact that people have taken my music into their hearts. And you can never calculate that or hope for it or wish for it because you never know if it's going to happen. So I'm trying to really live this moment, and it's been a great surprise. Well, I've been a solo artist now since 2006, and uh, I've released two albums in Norway, and I've been touring there like crazy, I'm playing in every, uh, every corner. <laughs> I love playing live, so I do that as much as possible. But then um, I played on the Nobel Peace Prize concert in, um, in December of last year, and I met Jason Mraz. And uh, we decided that um, during that concert that I was going to be his opening actor. He asked me, and I said, yes, of course. Um, so I traveled all around Europe with him for five weeks, and for the first time I discovered that uh, the music that I write really have the potential to, to reach people out, out of Norway as well, outside of Norway. Um, and then I, I met my spectacular record company, Hardworking People, and um, we just um, started, you know, brainstorming how, how we should do it and if we should try to collaborate on something. And we made this compilation, this album. And then from there, everything went so fast. It, was, it went from being a, a small idea with a group of motivated people to just exploding. And I kept getting all these great news on my phone. Like every day there was something, something to celebrate. And um, all in all, I think this year has been one of the best years of my life. Hands on, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to keep it up because uh, this is, I, I'm doing what I love. I mean, these songs are my songs and I'm, um, I'm presenting something that I stand for 100%. So it makes me survive doing all of those interviews and uh, traveling. I think traveling is actually the most exhausting part of what I do. Uh, people probably don't realize how how exhausting it is to to travel and play on the same day drive for four to six hours then do two two and a half hours of interviews and then a sound check and then go on stage um, and then wake up in the morning go to the next city but it's just for me I the energy comes from playing the music so I'm getting energy from what I am doing and I think that's um, the whole secret and I hope that I can do this for many years to come to get an inspiration for a song or to, to get a song started, uh, there are different things that can spark it, like a word in a conversation or when I read something, read a book uh, or a magazine or anything, and I, I, I see uh, a way of a combination of words that I haven't heard that way before. And, you know, English is my second language, so often I can get inspired by a word that somebody who hears English every day would never uh, bother to stop. Um, and and um, and think about, but I really get inspired by the English language, and um, uh, I, I've done a few of those things, I, but I, I, I usually keep them a secret, so I was just surprised that I had told someone. <laughs> but I was, uh, Solid Ground, I wrote for a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time from you get the first idea until you actually finish the song, at least for me. And um, it started with the piano part that I was playing. I thought it was going to be a piano piece. And then all of a sudden, it started picking up pace. And I was, uh, was writing this song. Um, and it's a song about insecurity and a very touchy subject. Because if you get too uh, mushy about it, it can be so cliche. So I was really looking for the right words. And then when I read um, somewhere, it will make you come undone at the seams. It was just... I even know where I got it now. <laughs> it's um, it's actually from one of Jewel's songs. Do you remember Jewel? On one of her first albums, I was um, reading them, uh, reading the lyrics and listening to the album at the same time, and I just thought, wow, that's amazing. Then I didn't use it until 
three, four years later. And I do that very rarely, to my defense. <laughs> I tend to think that the, that the best songs uh, are the ones that you write in, in um, a short period of time because then you, you remember the original idea really well. You keep that feeling inside. Um, but then again, some songs just take longer. They need more time, they need more space, and they need, maybe they need another perspective, you know, even in the second verse or in the bridge, or you need to, to make it interesting by, by bringing in a new perspective. Under the Surface is, is one of the songs that, that have been um, written in, in one day. That, that idea just came to me because I was, that song, is, okay, that song is about me. It is about me, and it was, I was having a, a terrible time dealing, dealing with it. So I just sat down and I wrote the song. I finished it when it was dark. My whole life has been music it's as long as I can remember, so it's hard to, to remember if there was a moment. Because for me, um, I'm not going to say that music chose me, because that's so cheesy, but I can't really imagine who I would be if I wasn't doing music. Um, but but definitely, I mean, I, I remember things that inspired me when I was younger, when I started listening to the Beatles and the Beach Boys and listening to great pop music and also some pretty bad pop music, of course. <laughs> I haven't always had great taste, but um, and it always fascinated me how you can tell a story in three and a half minutes, how you can um, really touch people's lives and... Um, and um, more about how songs were touching my life and my heart because I listened to so much music before I even started writing. Um, to this day, when I write songs, I try not to listen too much to music. Um, I, it makes me makes me um, lose my confidence a little bit. Like if I listen to my very favorite artists, um, for instance, Joni Mitchell, sometimes I can't, can't write anything for three months because She's so good that it just takes my breath away and it makes me feel like I have nothing to say. But um, then after a while it comes back and I start realizing that people are actually listening to my music now. And um, in some ways that's still hard for me to believe. When I started writing, I would often, if I got an idea, even if I knew that the idea wasn't great, I would just write for the sake of writing and I would finish the song and then put the song in a drawer and never sing it again. But now I know that I have to embrace the inspiration when it's there. If I have a, if I have an, um, a date or um, an appointment with a friend to have coffee and then it suddenly comes, I'll just, I have to cancel. I have to sit down with my piano, uh, go home, play my piano, and finish the song. Um, it's so, it's so rare, you know, and it's, um, it's something that you really cherish more and more. I think. No, I, I, I hear new music, I learn new things about my instruments and about my voice. When I'm touring a lot, like right now, my voice is opening up to a lot of other possibilities. My range is, is bigger and, um, and um, yeah, living like this, I meet so many people all the time. It's like a, a zoo of stories, you know? <laughs> so I just try to, I, I'm desperate for not losing ideas, so I, I, I downloaded um this is not a commercial, but it's a, a four-track recorder for my iPhone. So now I can just record onto that anywhere, everywhere. Is it good? It's good. It is. And um, it's good for late nights in the hotel room with my guitar alone, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> in your one room? Of course, since I've played these songs so many times live, they have uh, developed a lot, and I... Um, I sing them differently. I uh, have another take on it now. And um, the, the music is very alive when we're on stage, so we, we try different things. Um, but I, uh, I'm proud of those songs, and I, I hope that I'll be proud of the songs I'm writing now in two years or 20 years. I know that I'm being true to myself, and I know that the ideas uh, that actually make me write songs are the ones that stand out. Well, my iPhone is full of ideas. Uh, right now, it, it's sort of a, a mashup of choruses and verses and lyric ideas and 
phrases and things like that. So um, I've, I've always written like that. I collect ideas everywhere, and then when I sit down, I don't have to sit there with a clean slate and just see where it takes me. I can actually um, use something that's come to me when I wasn't trying to write, which also gives me the sort of uh, naive um, approach to the songwriting that I want. I don't want to sit down and think, oh wow, how can I write something that can be played on the radio or what is my audience expecting right now? I want to keep writing songs because I like writing songs and I want um, to try and keep the same approach to it that I've always had and not start just because now I've, I've had a hit on the radio in Germany and in Norway. People are buying my albums, so I don't want to have that in mind when I write. So I always use the ideas that just come to me when I'm least expecting it. And so far that's working out really well. I'm still writing songs for myself, songs that I like singing and performing, and um, I think that's the way I have to go about doing it. Unless I have time to sit down and finish songs over Christmas, um, my schedule is pretty busy up until the next tour. So I'll probably keep playing um, uh, the songs that I, that I played on this tour, but also add a few others that we didn't include in the show, and then maybe do some, some covers that mean a lot to me. I think we've, we've tried to keep this concert short this time around because it's the first time people are, are hearing me live and it's a lot of information to take in. But uh, the next time I think we'll, we'll play a bit longer and uh, explore a bit more. For me, the perfect Christmas is one that is exactly like all the others that I've had. No surprises. Um, the same food, the same music, the same people, um, the same traditions. I get to be um, the little kid in the house. <laughs> I, I love that about Christmas. You're allowed to be a child again. And my mom gets to be my mom for real. Uh, she gets to... Um, make Christmas for me like she did when I was a child and I think she likes it and I like it. We both like it so much. <laughs> and um, Christmas is the one time, uh, the one period of time each year where I always have time off, no matter what. It's, it's a really peaceful, nice time for me. You know, I usually do, but this year I found something really convenient in Berlin actually. It's um, uh, a small box with um, 24 different cough drops <laughs> so I can take one every morning <laughs> but they all have numbers and it's called a, a Christmas calendar cough drop calendar isn't that pathetic I just need I need to feel like it's Christmas even if I'm not at home well the Christmas decorations in the street are I guess a little bit um, similar everywhere I Christmas came very suddenly this year. I was just going to a store and getting some more socks because I hadn't been able to do my laundry on tour three weeks ago and already the Christmas decorations were up. Um, so it made me a little homesick. I think Christmas reminds me so much of home too that I just, um, that's why I like it so much. I only have Norwegian words for all of this, but um, what I eat on Christmas Eve is dried salted sheep. Um, that's cooked again and then stirred with potatoes and vegetables um, that are prepared as a stew. <laughs> it's my favorite dish and once I am, um, I tend to cheat a little bit so I start a few months early and then I finish a few months late. <laughs> One year I had that dish like 10 times or something. It's not, it's not very good for you but it's uh, very good. I don't know German at all, and it's so difficult. The, the three of us who aren't Chris are very lucky because <laughs> he, you know, he takes, he takes.